After you've created your artwork, you may want to align, distribute, or otherwise arrange your work to suit your needs. For instance, if we wanted to put all of these objects in a single row, we could use our Align option. Let's drag through those with our black arrow, creating an invisible marquee around everything and releasing our mouse to select everything. We can then use the options in our Align panel, which is accessible on the control bar at the top. So you could come up here anytime you have two or more objects selected to use the Align buttons, the Distribute buttons, or the Distribute, Spacing, and Align to options. You could also open up that panel as a freestanding panel, apart from the panel dock, and place it wherever you like. So let's do that. Also, you might want to make sure that you click it a few times so that you see all of the options that are available. So if we wanted to align all of the selected objects to the left, we click on that button. Now everything jumps to the leftmost object in alignment. We could do Center Horizontal Align or Right Horizontal Align. And I'm just undoing with my keyboard shortcut for each of these. You could also align things to the top. You could align things to the center. And align things to the bottom. Now as far as distribution goes, distribution takes into account the actual shape of all of your objects. So you notice that I have three shapes that are the same here, but the space between them is different. There's another shape here, and the space is much wider and yet another shape here with another spacing that's different than the other three. So if we were to distribute our objects, we can choose to distribute them either to align their tops, their centers, or their bottoms, as well as their lefts and their horizontal center and their rights. So let's click on each of these and you'll see what's happening. When you're distributing, you're actually creating like stair steps between objects' tops. So you can see that this one is the topmost object, and then this one, then that, then that, and that's the bottommost. So they're stepping from their very tops to the lowest top. And here's what happened with the center, and here's what would happen with the bottoms. Now, this may not be as apparent, and I'll show you all these buttons here with these differently shaped objects, and then we'll do the same thing with these same shaped objects so you can see how that differs. So here's horizontal distribute left. So the left sides of these are all even with the exception of this guy. There's the centers. So the center points between them should be even. And here's distributing to the rights. So now let's grab these shapes and we'll do the same thing so that you can see how they work. We'll also distribute their bottoms to the same level. And then this is distributing vertical top. Actually, we can undo this and let it do this at the same time. Vertical tops, vertical centers, vertical bottoms, horizontal distribution, left, center, and right. So you can see that there's even space between them, even though their tops and bottoms aren't aligned. So you can combine your align and your distribute options at any time. Now there's another option. Let me just undo that. There's another option for distributing the space. This first button will allow you to vertical distribute space, and the second button is for horizontal distribution of space. But you can also specify any particular value. So if you knew you needed to set the space between two or more objects, it's asking you to choose what's called a key object. Now within a selection of multiple objects, any one of them can be what's called the key object the object that the other objects in the selection will align or distribute to. So let's say we want to make this our key object. Just by clicking on it while the others are already selected, we get that darker, bolder selection line around it. And now when we want to modify this, we can then choose vertical or horizontal for that distribution. If you want to switch between them, you've got to reselect that key object before you make the change. But you can see how it really drastically affected the distribution value. Another option here is the Align To menu, and this is really handy at times. You can switch from the default, which is Align To the Selection. So whatever objects you have selected, they would align to one another. You could also choose Align To Key Object. And when you do that, you have to select a key object. If a key object is already selected and you don't want that one, deselect and then choose the object that you want to. And then you can choose any of your distribution options or alignment options. 
And the third option is to align to the artboard. So if we wanted to distribute our objects to the artboard, it's going to take the entire document size into account before it makes the distribution button that we selected, which is really cool. And you'll notice that it always, while well, we have our selection there, it always goes back, typically goes back to selection. Oh, I didn't deselect. There we go. Well, in this case, it stayed stuck on artboard, but typically it will default back to align to selection. I'm going to undo those shapes and put them back to the way they were. And we'll move that guy out of the way. Let's talk now about arranging your objects. And we talked a little bit about this in the past, other lessons, where you have your objects and they're stacked one on top of the other, but you can change the stacking order at any time using the Arrange option through the Object menu. So to arrange one or more objects, you would make your selection and then go to the Object Arrange menu and choose one of these, Bring to Front, Bring Forward, Send Backward, or Send All the Way to the Back. Here's your keyboard shortcuts. So this is for a PC. If you're on a Mac, you would choose Command instead of Control. And once you do this a few times with your keyboard shortcut, you probably won't ever need to use the mouse or even this menu. You can also access those options by right-clicking, Command or Control clicking to get the context menu. And there's your Arrange options. So if we wanted to bring those to the front, we just select them, and there they are, right on top, like so. So any of your objects can be arranged at any time. And once it's selected, you can reposition it in space. Now you could also group objects together. And it could be any two or more objects. And just select them both. And you can create a group by going into the context menu, just like you can for arranging. So choosing group here. Now when you move one, you move both. Other options in the context menu are ungrouping grouped objects. You can even undo a move or undo whatever you did last. You can isolate a selected group. And when you choose that, you go into what's called isolation mode. Isolation mode lets you modify the objects within a group while still retaining their group link. So if I wanted to make sure that that star's point was right on the corner there, and then I want to get out of isolation mode. You'll notice that we're inside of a grouping up here, and we're on layer one. And then if we want, we can go back out to layer one and back out of isolation mode. So now there's my grouped object. It still moves as a group, but we had already moved the star within the group within isolation mode. So if you ever see that everything else looks grayed out except for a selected object, Check up at the top of the screen and see if this isolation bar is visible. If you need to get out of isolation mode, just click that left arrow a few times until that gray bar disappears. You can enter isolation mode at any time by double clicking on a grouped object. Other options in the context menu are to transform. So you can repeat the prior transformation, whatever that happened to be, or you can access any of these, move, rotate, reflect, scale, shear, transform each, or even reset the bounding box. And that's a pretty neat option. So let's say we rotated our object, and you can see that the bounding box is still in alignment with that shape. If you choose Reset Bounding Box, the bounding box will now wrap to be horizontal and vertical to you, relative to you, rather than relative to the shape. Another thing that you can do as far as arranging goes is you can cut and paste so if you wanted to, you could select an object, and actually let's go up to this edit menu and choose cut. And then you could use any of these options to paste. You can paste where it was. So if you paste it, it's going to just drop it right in the center of your artboard. And for some reason, we were in isolation mode. No need to be there. Let's put it back here. So you can cut and paste. You could also cut, and I'm just going to use a keyboard shortcut. You could also paste in front, and that would put it in front of everything. So let's send it all the way to the back first, and then we'll cut it, and then we'll do that again. Paste in front. So now it's definitely in front. We could also cut it and paste it in back, like so. And then another option is to paste it in place. So even though it was behind everything before, it's still pasting it in the same position. 
And this is really handy. Sometimes you might need to copy something from one document and paste it into another document, but want to retain its relative position. Or even cutting something from one layer and pasting it onto another layer while retaining its same position. So that's a really handy tool to know about. Now another feature that you may not have ever used before is the draw behind and draw inside option. Now by default we're in the normal drawing mode and you can click shift D to switch modes. But if you wanted to, you could switch into draw behind mode. If I were to grab a shape and start drawing, it's going to draw behind the object like so. And that will go for whatever object that you're drawing on top of, you'll be drawing behind. Now this other option is to draw inside. Before you can draw inside, however, you should select the object you want to draw inside of, then switch over to the draw inside, and you'll notice that there's a dashed line around that selected object. You can then draw inside that object by clicking and dragging. Now that draw inside shape has a different color, so I'm just going to change it after I've drawn it, like so. You can change the color here. But you'll notice that I'm actually drawing inside of it, so if I click and drag away, it's creating like a clipping mask so that those objects are inside that shape and anything that extends beyond that shape is being clipped or hidden from view. When you're finished drawing inside of an object, I recommend returning to normal drawing mode. This will deselect that particular object and then you can continue drawing. Let's shift down here and now talk about Pathfinder. The Pathfinder panel is grouped with the Align and Transform panels. So if you haven't already opened it, if you had closed this one, reopen it through the window menu, Pathfinder. Pathfinder has two sets of buttons, the Shape Modes and the Pathfinder Modes, and these are tools that you can use to combine objects as well as to cut objects almost like punches, like choosing a shape to bite out a shape from another object. With your Shape Modes, you can use the Alter Option key to create a compound shape or add to the shape area and then click this expand button. Or if you want to just go straight to creating a compound shape, you don't have to do any keyboard shortcuts, the shape is automatically expanded. So let's take a look at what each of these do. So the first button is called Unite up here. And if you select both of your objects and click on that Unite button, what happens is the two objects are grouped together into a single shape and they take on the color and line attributes of the topmost shape. And it's already an expanded shape. I'm going to undo that. And now we're going to hold down our Alt or Option key and then click on that button. At this point, instead of a single unified shape, we're having almost like a clipped shape or a mask shape. Those two pieces are still separate pieces, but they're grouped together. We could, if we wanted, come in with our white arrow to select any of these individual pieces and move them around. And if we click away and then try to click on the shape again, you'll notice that they move as a group. They retain their editability. Then once we had the objects the way that we like them and we knew that that was exactly the way they wanted to be, we could click the expand button to create that original compound shape that we did at the beginning. Here's what the minus front looks like. So it's subtracting that front piece and I'm not going to show you the alter option for each one of them because it works in a similar way. And sometimes there may be like a halo of the missing piece. So you may want to uh, select with your white arrow and see if there's anything in that space because that could be one of those stray points or stray paths that you would want to clean up. In this case, there isn't anything there. Here's what the intersect button looks like. It's that third one. And you don't have to remember what any of these are called. If you hover your cursor over each button, you'll see the name, and you'll be reminded to Alter Option Click to create that compound shape, like so. So do you see what happened there? Our topmost shape is used as a cutter for the bottommost shape, and the only thing that's left were the intersecting parts of the two. Here's what happens with the Exclude option. The overlapping parts disappear. Again, if you want to separate the pieces, you'll have to deselect and then select the individual pieces with your white arrow to move them apart from one another, like so. 
Now let's shift up and talk about the Pathfinder modes. With your Pathfinder modes, you'll select both objects and put your cursor on each one so you can see what the name is. You can click on the button, and I think the buttons are actually very illustrative in that they show you what's going to happen. So if you click on that Divide button, what you're left with is a bunch of individual pieces that are grouped. So you can separate the pieces with the white arrow, or you can ungroup them and then continue using your black arrow to move apart the individual pieces, like so. Here's what happens when you trim. When you trim, you'll notice that the stroke disappeared, but you did use both pieces as cutting tools, so you have two separate shapes. And these tools, all of these tools in the Pathfinder panel are fantastic for creating logos to give you unique shapes that would be difficult to recreate. Here's what happens with Merge. Again, ungrouping. Here's Crop. Cropping, let's undo and redo that. So you see the underlying shape and the shape on top. And when you click the Crop tool, you're left with the overlapping shape. We can ungroup though, and you'll notice how there's still a little piece on the side here. It has no stroke and no fill, but it still exists. So that piece you could then either colorize or discard. Here's outline. And in this case, we're left with the faintest, teeniest, tiniest outline. Let's make that a little bit thicker so you can see it. And it is grouped, so you can ungroup it. And then you can move the individual pieces apart from one another, like so. And then the last one is to minus the back. I'll undo and show you that again. So the entire back piece is deleted from the front piece. And in this case, there's no grouping, there's no haloed piece or anything invisible on the artboard. When you're finished working with these tools, you can collapse the panel or make it go away just by clicking here. Or you can also deselect it in the window menu and then it'll disappear from your artboard.